Steve, when you yeah. Uh, yeah. when you went into this off season, did you see it playing out similarly to how it did, or was it more a as you watched kind of the way the the market was going, you changed course a little bit? Well, I was a little surprised that you know sort of the prices had gone up for players mm -hmm. you know, more than I would have guessed, and so um, um, so we. Um, you know, listen, it's, it's a fluid situation. And, uh, you know, we, we had some ideas on what we wanted to do. And you always have contingency plans, right? Because you never know what's going to, how it's all going to play out, right? Mm -hmm. So you need a plan A, plan B, plan C. And, but I'm really pleased at how it turned out. I mean, we had, we had a lot of free agents. And uh, so we had a lot of people to replace. And it really turned out well. I'm really excited by this team. Um, walking around yesterday, I feel I an mean, incredible vibe here. I think this is the best vibe I've felt and since I you know, started this, uh, being an owner. And uh, so I'm excited. You know, this, this is a good looking team. When you say vibe, the yeah. you mean the yeah. collection of players? You've Just put? the players, how they, you know, how, you know, the, the, how they feel about it, each other. They're having fun already. Um, they're veterans, you know, they kind of know the gig. And, um, you know, I just, I just, I can't tell you what it is, but I, I walked out of here yesterday going, wow, I really like, really like the way this place feels. Steve, one of the yeah. things the returning free agents said at the press conferences, the reason they came back was yeah. because you made them feel like family. Yeah. And speaking to all the players, yeah. there's a family atmosphere here. Yeah. How have you been able to get that culture here? And what have you taken from your other businesses that have helped you build that culture? Well, you know, listen, they're people, right? And, and just like at point 72, you know, I, I care about my people. And, and, you know, other people have said, eh, you shouldn't get that close to the players. And, uh, you know, I would do it differently. And I don't agree with that. Um, I, think there's, I think it's important to have a personal touch. Uh, I think that matters. It shows you care. And, you know, my wife feels the same way. And so it's just the way we are. And I'm going to do it my way. So uh, and it works for me. It's worked in the past, and I'm going to keep doing it. Given all that yeah. you've put into this, will anything less than the World Series be a disappointment? Listen, you know how hard it is to get, to get into the World Series, right? I mean, as we saw last year, right? So the only thing you can do is put yourself in a position where good things can happen. You've got to make the playoffs. you got to be, uh, the team's got to be healthy. It's got to be rested. It's got to be raring to go. And then you let the chips fall where they may. And if you keep putting yourself there, one day we'll get there. Okay? Obviously, I'd love it sooner than later, but, you know, I can't control that. What, what, do, you think, be, what yeah. do you think of your three to five year plan that you had put in, Stephen? Well, you had mentioned yeah. when you first Well, took you know, if there was ever one thing I'd like to get back, is that one. Okay? <laughs> so, uh, you know, but, you know, all kidding aside, there's nothing wrong with like putting out really, you know, stretch goals, right? Like you may get there and you may not, but it's important to set goals that are high. And so, um, and then try to achieve them. And if we get there, we get there. If not, you know, we'll, we'll keep trying. Which, what, yeah. what would be a success for this season? Yeah, I haven't thought about that. You know, I mean, I know we made progress last year. And I want to, you know, success can be measured obviously with results. But also, you know, I also think there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes. You know, how, how we're developing our farm system, uh, processes we're putting in place, the people we're bringing in. And um, as long as we're advancing the ball forward in a significant way, um, I, I'll let the results, the results will happen from good process. And, uh, and that's what we're trying to achieve here. And, and uh, I can't predict you know, plenty of teams have won divisions and, and they get to, uh, they, they, you know, they don't win a World Series right away or it takes them a long time. But if, you, if you're there every year, your odds go up. And it, yeah. At Verlander's yeah. press conference over the winter, he mentioned that his phone call with you made a difference to him. I'm curious yeah. how much it's important to you to kind of have a hand in these things, especially the bigger signings when they're happening. I mean, it's back to what I said before, you know, having that personal touch, acting like you care. Um, getting to know them as individuals, uh, I, I think that matters. And, you know, if, if, if that helps the, helps us landing uh, the people we want, then I'm going to keep doing it, right? So no one, it, I don't think it's hurt us. So uh, if it hurt us, that would stop. Steve, yeah. some I, outside today I saw fans wearing shirts with your face on them. Yeah. I imagine that <laughs> doesn't happen in most, if not all, other markets. Is that 
a point of pride? Are you surprised well, to I have ended up as? <laughs> <laughs> so it's not really fair, but um, I actually have lost some weight, so I'm, the picture doesn't look as, you know, as good as maybe I don't know how good it looks now. But, um, but um, yeah, listen, I mean, it just you know, if the fans get excited by whatever they get excited by, or they feel like it's they're, they're, you know they're they're passionate, and they feel like they're part of something bigger than themselves, and you know. I, must, I represent the Mets. It's not me, okay? It's the Mets. And, and uh, if they, they're getting excited, that's a good thing, right? So uh, anything to get the fans engaged. But I guess, is it important to you that fans see you more as an ally than an obstacle, which I think fans see some of the owners as? Well, I can't speak for the other owners, but, uh, you know, I, I, I've always tried to, since I've owned the team, to find ways to engage with the fans, right? Whether it's taking a selfie or, you know, Twitter or... You know, my wife goes up to the upper deck every game she's at and gives out tickets to a family that, and moves them down to the front row. It's our way of interacting. And, you know, it doesn't take much, right? I mean, we're not doing that much yet. It means a lot. And so, you know, it's back to realizing that without the fans and their excitement and engagement, you know, there's no, there's no, there's no mats, right? So got to keep that in mind. They're important to us. Steve, have yeah. any owners directly said to you, Steve, what are you doing spending all this yeah. money, or is this stuff you kind of hear through whispers? Well, it's interesting. The At the owners' meeting, I, I, I had owners coming up, and they go, you're 100% right. You are for following the rules. And so, um, you know, that was, which, which I am. And they, you know, like I said um, in, a, in a previous article, they laid down the rules on following them. Um, you know, listen, in the end, and I think this is really important, that um, when I measure my success as an owner, obviously you want to win a World Series. But, you know, I'm also going to measure my success on building a farm system so we can create sustainability year in and year out. And um, um, that's really important to me, okay, because, I, you know, that's how you, that's how you really uh, create something that's special, right? And, and you know, the farm system being innovative and doing new things and, and developing players, uh, you know, taking good players and making them great. And, and if, if we can accomplish some of those things, and I think we can, then, you know, that would be a marker of success for me, when, personally. When yeah. you bought the process yeah. going for the farm system? Listen, it's a work in progress, right? I mean, I think the first year was um, fact-finding, right? And, you know, getting familiar with what's going on here. I think bringing in Billy, um, you know, and, and let him know what, what was important to me, and, and he's executing on that. And uh, I'm sure you've seen changes within the system. Um, and, um, you know, so we're definitely on the path, but it takes time. It takes time. I mean, Billy was emphasizing defense in his interview. Uh, I don't think they focused enough on defense in, in the minor leagues before, right? So, I mean, it's something, you know, you got to be a complete ball player and, and not just a half a ball player. And um, so these things are important to us, and, and uh, it requires a different approach, a more rigorous approach, and that's what we're doing. Can you talk about yeah. a, a blueprint where you're at, an early step where you maybe spend more yeah. on the major league team while you wait for the farm system to get where you want it to be? Yeah. How long might that step last? It's, it's hard to say. It takes a while to develop players, right? They just don't you know, come in day one and, and perform at a major league level. So it's, you know, people have to be patient, it's taking time. I see, I see progress. and, and um, you know, I'm encouraged what we're doing down in the lower part of the system, and, and uh, from what I hear, we're developing pitchers, which I think is really important. Um, and and uh, so, you know, like I, you know, I'm going to measure it year to year, and as long as we're making upward progress and significant progress, I'm going to be pleased. When you bought the yeah. team, you said that you're not going to spend like drunken sailors. Was this yeah. all season yeah. not that? Well, you know, there was an inflation of prices. <laughs> I mean, like I did not expect what happened. Okay, and I don't think any of the owners did either. I mean, like, all of a sudden, I think it's interesting because I had mentioned to, at baseball, the possibility that inflation might matter, you know, given the inflation we saw in the general economy. And all of a sudden, we were looking at prices up 20, 30%. And I mean, that was, that was a shocker to me and certainly changed our plans. And I had to think differently. You know, 300 million didn't, you know, which is still a lot of money, didn't, didn't spend, you know, didn't, didn't, didn't get us like, like it used to, you know, what we could get. And so, um, you know, listen, you gotta, you gotta be flexible, you gotta be adaptable. And that's, that's how I do things. How you know, have you felt about the added level of yeah. celebrity? Yeah. 
this job has brought you? Yeah, listen, it, it's part of the gig. Um, I'm comfortable with it. Uh, you know, I kind of look at it as, as, you know, I got a job to do. My job is, is to, you know, build a great ball club and, and interact with the fans. And, and it's not about me, it's about them. Okay, so I, I don't view it as, like, important to me, you know, so, you know, it's more, it's more about making them happy. By all accounts, you're, you're losing a couple hundred million dollars yeah. at this point. Uh, John, can uh, you lend me some money? <laughs> yeah, right. uh, how, how much does this bother you at all at this point? At some yeah. point, will it, will it bother you? Like, well, listen, I can't predict the future, right? Right. It's, you ever notice it's really hard to predict the future? I always find that. So I can only go year to year, and and um, but you know, listen, I I have another business. Like, you know, I'm, so far I'm doing pretty well. So um, you know, so as long as Things are going well, and and I can see a path. Listen, ultimately the path is to create a sustainable farm system. That's how we're going to lower our payroll in a way that doesn't uh, hurt our success, and and that's that's where we ultimately have to go. Uh, at least for me to consider my ownership a success, and um, and I feel really I, I really feel it's important. Yeah, you know, I can always supplement with free agents, and right now I'm bridging. And, uh, but you, at some point, I would think we'll get to the point that other clubs have gotten to where uh, we can do both. Steve, Steve yeah. what do you think about yeah. the formation of this new economic committee that has been uh, affected by the owners? Oh, well, I think it was formed like six months ago or, you know, I mean, you know whatever it is. And, and I'm not on it, so I don't, I don't know what's going on. And, and uh, But, you know, listen, I, I, I'm supportive of owners getting together and talk about, you know, the economics of baseball and how to, you know, Create more revenue, and, and uh, to own it. you know, there are a lot of smart people who are owners, and they have good ideas. And any way you can get people together, I think is a good thing. What you desire do you have to sign Pete Alonso to a long-term contract? Listen, you know, I'm going to let um, Billy handle that, and, and uh, obviously, at the right time, you know, we'll figure out what to do. Um, and uh, Pete's a tremendous player, and the fans, he's a fan favorite. And uh, you know, listen, he just got, he just came in. I think he lost 15, 20 pounds, and you know, in shape, and and uh, you know, he's a great ball player. So uh, you know, we'll see how that goes. Steve, now that you know the rest of the league a little bit, yeah. do you think your commitment to the fans can be a bit of an X factor? And wh what do you mean by that? In terms of that driving you out of every sort of decision that you make. Well, you know, listen, that's part of my consideration. And, you know, I, I made a commitment to the fans, right? And it wasn't a short-term commitment. You know, when I do something, I don't do it halfway, okay? I mean, I, when I'm in, I'm all in. And, uh, you know, I, I don't accept mediocrity well. And so I have a certain high expectations. And, it, and if it requires me to invest in this club, then I'm going to do it. To that end, Steve, yeah. is having such a discrepancy with some teams at the top of high payrolls and yeah. that is that yeah. good for baseball? And if it's not, ultimately, how do you remedy it? Yeah, listen, I, they've been dealing with that problem for a long time. And, um, you know, listen, I'm not, you know, I, it's really hard for me to say how to solve solve that because I think it's a multi-variable problem. And um, so, uh, you know, I think ultimately, I think the key for baseball is you need to grow revenues. And it, it can't be through, you know, constantly raising ticket prices. Okay, you know, it, it's got to be getting more attendance, getting more interest in the game. And that's, you know, why I'm a big proponent of investing. And if baseball invests in their future, um, and, they, and the owners invest in their future, I think we'll get a pretty good result. Steve, right. you mentioned you, how proud you are of the fan outreach and yeah. the fact that Alex goes in the stands in the t-shirts. Yeah. Over and above that, you know, when the fan base calls you Uncle Steve, how yeah. much do you think about that? Well, I mean, it, it, it sounds like it's done out of uh, out of affection, and and so uh, it's fine, you know. Like it's it's all fun, right? We're all having fun. I mean, uh, it's great that the fans want to engage with me in, in a way that's that you know that's positive. Um, so you know, listen, as long as it keeps going, I'll, I'll be Uncle Steve forever. I'm fine. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. All right. Steve. Thanks, you guys. Steve. All right. Yeah.